I will now describe uh, very briefly the property that make convolutional neural network really effective uh, in terms of uh, really recognizing uh, things in an image. Uh, convolutional neural networks have two main properties that are extremely important. Uh, as you can see by reading uh, Jan Lecun's paper from 1998, one of them is their hierarchical. So what that means is they have multiple layers of feature extraction. Layer one, layer two, they could have multiple more uh, before they come into classifier. They um, have the prop property of invariance. They try to uh, extract features that are invariant to different things. So imagine that uh, you're looking for a face, for example. Uh, a face, to you it looks the same, but if you think about it, in a, in a pixel, in terms of pixels and numbers in an image, it's just very, very different. And in fact, even if you were trying to record uh, your face uh, in a movie, even if you tried extremely hard to keep your face in the same position and so forth, no two frames will be alike. Uh, there will be slight change in illumination during the day. Uh, your, your position will be slightly different. There will be slightly different noise in the image. So, the image that uh, comes into the convolutional neural network is always different, uh, even if uh, you are trying to detect something. That's what makes really uh, detecting things in an image extremely difficult. And this is what also makes the detecting things in any real data extremely difficult and why machine learning is so important and why these techniques are so important. So um, it's really the key concept is to have invariance and, um, and to have a hierarchy also, it's also very important because you want to try to extract features that have uh, uh, more and more interesting property that you, that you care for and they can be combined together. Like as a scene, for example, a scene of a beach uh, could be just the sky and the sand, uh, but in reality, and that would be maybe the, the base. Uh, in reality, the scene also contains uh, maybe things on the beach, houses, uh, waves, um, maybe something on the sea like a boat and so forth. And that's the hierarchy. So we will explore uh, this property of convolutional neural network in uh, um, the second portion of the, uh, the lecture number three. So uh, first of all, why convolutional neural networks? As I said, hierarchy is extremely important. So uh, I took um, this picture from Yosha Benjo um, book where he shows himself actually sitting on a beach or sitting somewhere. So you have this scene, you, you and I will recognize very quickly that it's a, it's a man sitting uh, on a beach, for example, or some, you know, on a street, we don't really know exactly. Um, if you look at uh, basically every pixel in the image is just the di different values. Every pixel might have three values because it's RGB. In this case, it's just the grayscale, so there's there's one uh, value per pixel. So if this is the initial representation, what we care about maybe is we want to break this image into a slightly higher level representation. I want to find, for example, groups of objects or things that are related. So, you know, I might be interested that uh, here there's there's a person, or I might be interested uh, this. Um, to find out um, uh, about all the possible edges in the scene, so combination of edges. Eventually, I want to get maybe I want to detect hands and faces of a person. Eventually, if I go up the hierarchy, I want to detect the whole man. So there's a person there, uh, and I might want to detect uh, something else about this person. Maybe I can say that he's sitting, and I can detect that maybe there's a, uh, there's a floor or there's a ground of specific kind and there's some bushes or some stones on the back. So eventually we want to go up the hierarchy and, uh, and try to figure different things out. So for it's more or less the same thing that you do if you were to look for a specific book in your house. You would have to go to your house, uh, and that's the whole image, let's say, the whole house, and then you would have to go and find a room which are part of the house. Um, and then within this part, you might have to go into a specific room and find a bookshelf and then find a specific portion of the bookshelf and find your book. So as you can see, there's a hierarchy of action events and things, uh, um, in particular in images. 
So that's the most important thing. Um, there's a second explanation that might be more uh, engineering oriented, the circuit oriented is if you guys are familiar with circuit and how digital logic is implemented, you would also think that uh, basically what neural networks are trying to do is that they are trying to create functions of function of function. This is the hierarchy. So there's going to be a function that implements the first layer and there's a second function that takes the, the output of the first layer and implements the second and another function that implements the third and so forth. Uh, or maybe F is the classifier, so layer one, layer two, and a classifier. Um, so what they do is really, because neural network, a single one could be a function approximation. Here what they try to do is that they try to combine multiple function, the ability of a function approximator to detect a specific kind of features uh, and use those features uh, to detect st another kind of features and so forth. So this representation is more compact and more efficient in the same way that um, um, usually in circuits you don't really uh, design things just with one layer. Uh, convolutional neural network, as we saw before, have multiple layers of, of processing. Um, why not just do one layer? Well, that's what has been done a lot in machine learning um, and statistics for a long time. Uh, usually people were trying to use a single layer. If you try to, though, to discriminate invariance and property of an image, one layer will be extremely, extremely large. So um, the first layer, if you're trying to, if you try to detect it directly from these uh, pixels into higher level representation, uh, your machine uh, might be extremely large, might have to have an enormous amount of computation. In fact, Yosha Benjos talks in his book that every time you lose a layer, you basically have an exponentially growing number of, as, a, um, as referred to the input, an, an, an exponentially growing number of features that you have to add to the layer below. So if you were trying to recognize this image from just a layer, you would have to have enormous amount of features while instead if you had two more layers for example you could contain uh, each uh, representation to be very small and each processing um, could be very small and I would like to point to, to Joshua Benjo um, a book for more uh, uh, information um, really more information regarding uh, this issue but as I was saying um, the the comparison with the circuits is uh, when you try to, for example, to make an ad design an adder, you create a function that uh, adds two number, carry, and the sum, uh, and then you don't really just flatten the whole uh, circuit and try to, if you want to try to add multiple bits, you don't really try to uh, regenerate these circuits uh, from scratch, but rather you use these components, which makes it very compact uh, representation and easy. So this is some kind of a hierarchy. So uh, where this cell uh, implements the function H and then this block will implement the function G and then you could have an ALU that implements everything. So the whole idea is to be more efficient and more compact and Joshua Benjo in his book uh, gives some kind of a proof, small proofs, uh, even mathematical of uh, why this is happening. So I would like to point you to that. Other things that are quite important about uh, convolutional neural network are inv invariance and redundancy. So if you look at images, uh, for example, and most of you will be familiar with this, um, images have a, geno a very high um, redundancy in um, uh, both in space and in time, if you're talking about movies. So an image, for example, has a redundancy of pixels in space. So two pixels that are contiguous uh, more likely will have a very similar value, if not the same value. Usually noise prevents them to have the same value, but they might have a very dif uh, small value. Um, and also, uh, you can break out images in, in, in small portions, so for example, combination of, of uh, lines and so forth. So because of this property of uh, uh, local information, you want to uh, you want to group things together, pixels together that have something to say of a specific kind. That's why uh, convolutional neural network use uh, receptive fields uh, that are convolutional, so they take into account not just one pixel but a group of them, which most probably have more information than just the pixel itself. Uh, images also tend to have. Uh, this uh, redundancy both in space and in time. So 
um, normalization is sometimes used to um, get rid of uh, extra information that an image might have, like illuminate changes in illumination or different illumination that might mod not be relevant to recognizing, for example, a human. Um, convolutional neural network also share the processing uh, as we saw before this uh, this filter so one filter is actually repeated all over the image the whole image is convolved by the same kind of filter and the whole point there is that, that you want to use the same filter in multiple areas because the same kind of filter that has importance in, in, in one area of the image might be also important in other areas of the image. That's because if you try, for example, to detect vertical filters, well, vertical uh, edges in an image are uh, all over the place, especially in this example here, or the where there's also horizontal edges and so forth. So having a vertical detector might be able to ex uh, be part of a feature extractor of uh, quite a lot of components in this image, so that's why it's important to extract them. Convolutional neural network also are invariant to uh, positions, so because of th these features, um, this convolution are, are done at diff in everywhere in the image, so the same convolution that uh, report the features here would report the same features in here and in here and in here, for example, because they're all a translated version of the same. So ideally, you want if you want to recognize a face in an image, you, you don't really care uh, whether it's slightly shifted left, left or right, up and down, unless your task really cares for it. Uh, so uh, you would want to have some invariance to position. Invariance to position is done by these re repeated filters, uh, by sharing the filters, as we said, shared weights in local receptive fields. You also want to be invariant to size. To be, for example, if you want to detect the face um, in, in a perspective image, you want to detect it when it's close. You want to detect it when it's uh, when it's quite far and it's uh, approximately four, you know, four to six times smaller than the first one. And you want to recognize letters of different size. We have this ability as humans, and we um, we need machines to have this ability as well. You also want invariance to rotation, position, and angles. And all of these things can be given by, by a convolutional neural network. Um, so humans have a good ability to detect uh, invariant to rotation, although um, if you rotate an image, for example, too much more than 90 degrees, uh, uh, even humans have some trouble. Uh, but so here, for example, is the same person um, with different illumination, different days, different condition, and uh, uh, various position, various uh, um, um, mount open, mount close. So uh, even though we, you might recognize that it's the same person, you might actually have a hard time to recognize that you know this this person is the same person as this, or this is the same person as this. Uh, even humans m m are not perfect at this. But if you know the person very well, you can you can do this job quite quickly. So even um, neural network have to have this kind of invariance to position, to, to rotation, to and angles. And the way you do this is convolutional neural network per se, with this architecture, might not give you, uh, might give you some of this uh, ability because uh, um, if you rotate an image, in uh, it will still stay in about the same and extract about the same kind of number of number of features at each level. So it will have a little bit of. Uh, Invariance. If you want more, you will have to uh, train the network with examples that uh, of faces that are rotated uh, or at different poses and so forth. So you have to provide them example to the network, and also part of part of the architecture of the network can can do that for you. Also, you want invariance to noise or distortion. That's another very big property, and very important property of neural network. But neural network exceed. Uh, at this is that you really want to be able to detect a symbol even if it's uh, um, distorted by uh, by noise or other other things. And this neural network can do fairly well because uh, uh, they are they can recognize the same features no matter how um, you know as as long as there is enough signal to noise ratio to be able to detect those features. The neural networks are very quite insensitive to noise. 
we will show details of the convolutional neural network in particular what each operation does and how it's represented um, and what kind of connection there are between the layers in uh, in the next lectures um, that was given by Isaac Oldundar recorded by yourself so uh, stay tuned for a second for a little bit for the next uh, lecture uh, just the last thing that I wanted to say is that most of these uh, convolutional neural network like all neural networks uh, are trained by minimizing a cost function here repeat the same cost function that we saw before um, and usually what they want to do is they want to minimize the error between uh, the output and, and, and the tag so the output from the network and the actual output in a training set and it's done exactly the same way and by modifying this cost function you can have the neural network uh, trained for different things for example if you want to it to be recognized uh, um, actions instead of just objects you might want to say that you want multiple frames to come in and they have to be all labeled in the same way and so forth to conclude this lecture I'd just like to um, uh, remind you that convolutional neural network are not the only model of vision that um, they um, they are based on uh, ideas from the neocognitron uh, from Fukushima in the 80s or even before um, Kunihiro Fukushima. Uh, this idea of getting mood, uh, getting invariant representation, extracting features at multiple level uh, in the 80s, what things were missing um, was uh, the ability to really, and until 1996. This ability was not really done, in especially except for convolutional neural network in some specific case, the, the ability to train this network. So the idea was there before uh, the ability to train it uh, really existed and computational power to really try to do examples. Uh, more recently, another model that is very important is the model by uh, Poggio, Tommaso Poggio and Serre. Some publication here called um, HMAX. So or uh, something similar um, that is more of a biospire model but it has kind of the same uh, ideas of cells a simple cell and complex cell just uh, has in uh, uh, convolutional neural network that extract the features and independence of size and so forth in the multi -lay. I highly recommend uh, um, students and any, anyone interested to to lead the papers and uh, from uh, Thomas Poggio and Thomas Serre as well because they are very much relevant and uh, these great researchers are still continuing their effort in exactly the same direction.